everyone welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new to the channel a very big welcome um, today I thought I would hop on and show you how to do a sunset and sunrise gradient so I'm busy working in mythographic paradise with um, illustrations by Fabiano Atanasio and I'm doing a body color um, for this page um, so I didn't choose the, the page the person I'm doing a body color with she chose the page and um, I felt that a sunset and sunrise background would really tie in um, the theme that we that I wanted to do on this page that as um, for the body color we agreed on and while I was doing the right side I thought it would make a really great video to show you how to um, use a different gradient to create that effect without having to worry about clouds so um, I am using Prismacolor pencils for this. You can use the exact same method regardless of um, coloring book or um, pencils. And um, what we want to do is start at the, the mountains or wherever your um, horizon is starting. You want to start your sky very dark with the orange and also very dark with the pink and then work your way towards a deep blue. So for um, this tutorial I'm going to start off with a pumpkin orange then I will move on to um, a bit of pale vermilion. I will blend into goldenrod, sand, and finish it off with um, the beige which will then blend gently into a cloud blue and then I go into my blue um, colors and the idea is you want to have your blue mixing with your lightest color whether it's a light pink or a light yellow you can also use a light gray and that will help prevent your colors from mixing into um, green or purple or any other color you don't actually want for in your sky. And that really is um, so far the key I have found to um, coloring in a multicolor gradient. You want to keep um, your colors kind of separate and weave them into each other so that there's not too much of a yuck color going on between your transitions. So I'm starting off with the pumpkin orange which is PC1032 and what you can also do is just um, think, think of a grid on your page and um, in my case I have already drawn a slight um, horizontal line and I've sectioned off a bit of where I want my colors so I know how high up to go with my dark colors how high up before the next transition where my blue needs to start in um, on a full page you would just need to draw grid lines um, so across horizontal lines across and just decide how f how deep you want your sunset or your sunrise and how much of the pack the background you want in your deep blues to light blues um, and once you've uh, worked on that then you just basically start coloring up towards that now with a mountain background it won't be a straight line so um, for example down here in this valley my orange is going to be a lot more than say up here where this mountain top is um, because on this bit my sky is kind of where I'm trying to put my lines 
it will be a fraction into my yellows so um, again it don't it's not something to overly fuss over but um, you want to have an idea of how high up you want to do your darkest color and, and each gradient um, so we're just going to carry on with the pumpkin orange and I'm using a medium pressure here um, it's because it's a background I don't need to do um, forever layers <laughs> um, layering is good because it will help transition so you do need to do some layers but we don't have to go super light and then be doing this for the whole evening I find it's with mountains or buildings it can be a bit tricky to not try and create straight lines and to allow the sky to vary um, so just be mindful of that it it can have dips in them and if you need to turn your page turn your page you know um, whatever is going to work to help you so when i want to start introducing my darkest yellow i'm going to go lighter on my orange because i want to create a smooth transition between my colors um, i don't want to be too hard of a line with prismacolor you can kind of scratch it's smooth in a way um, but for good practice it would be best to kind of go light and soft or medium to light and build up then you know too hard and then you can't mix your colors as smoothly so now I'm going to use my goldenrod PC 1034 and I'm going to go into the lighter sections of my orange and out and again I'm using a hard pressure and then I'm going to ease up at the top and go in a bit hard and also you can change the directions you're coloring in so that you don't end up with these lines um, and then I'm going to do that for the um, entire page I can zoom you in a bit more So if, you, if I'm going one direction, when I'm finished with this layer, I should go the off, a, a different direction and that will help to blend and smoothen out my layers. If you need to be a bit lighter and you're not sure if your pressure is right, just move your hand a bit further away from the tip. The further back you hold your pencil, the lighter your pressure will be. Also going in small circular motions will help create um, a smooth blend.
All right, next I'm going to bring in my sand, which is PC940. And I'm going to blend that into my goldenrod. Again, medium pressure. And you can go back and forth as well. Okay, bearing in mind from about here, so if I'm not sure where my blue needs to start, I can pick up my powder blue, which is PC1023, sorry, cloud blue. And I can just lightly color in my blue. So I remember how high up my yellow needs to go. And if you feel you need more orange, then you just go back in and do a bit more of the orange. Okay, so we know to go up to there. So if I'm coming here with my blue, then my beige, PC997, can come in here. So right now I'm more placing my colors than I am actually blending them together. It's a bit of blending going on, but I'm more just mapping out my sunset, which is what I've done here with the sun rise. So I will get to this in a minute. Um, let's go back in with a bit of Pale Vermilion PC921. And what I want to do with this pale vermilion is just deepen the orange. Now it doesn't have to be terribly high. I just want to create a bit more of an orange feel here. So again, medium pressure. I've still got plenty of tooth in the paper. Um, it's still wanting to take layers. Okay, then I go back in with PC1032 Pumpkin Orange. And here you could do a bit of a hard pressure. And then going lighter into the yellow. So hard, medium, and then lighter.
Okay, so next I'm going to come in with my golden rod. And again, I'm using a hard pressure because I'm blending this out now. I don't need to do too much more. And again, light as I go out. And you can go over the orange as well with it. Um, lighter as you come out. And with the um, this sort of a background, um, my humble opinion is to go for color saturation because um, it will just contrast really well with the rest of the, the page and um, make it stand out. Whereas, um, so I'm not looking for like a washed out effect. I want it to be vibrant and rich. Um, so I'm doing two things. I'm trying to see how can I saturate my color while keeping it, um, it's having a depth. But I'm also looking at how do I do that whilst also blending out my colors and making sure there aren't too many um, lines. So next I'm coming in with sand. This is also something if you want to use like a uh, alcohol marker blender to smoothen it out, you could probably save up on some pencil there. You could use a OSM like zest it and you would be able to um, blend out your, your pencils probably with less pigment than what I'm using and still have a rich color you just want to make sure you've got um, enough pigment down to create the effect that you're wanting um, I've I often see um, pictures beautifully colored pictures and I can see where the person is where they're wanting to take their picture and um, it just needs a little bit more pigment on the page and then it would really pop and stand out and the effect that they're going for would just be even more um, out there more of clear I suppose and it's totally fine like if if you 
not sure about pushing the pigment then that's just where you are in the journey and I would just want to reassure you that um, that's okay and as you build in confidence you'll find yourself um, putting more pigment down and pushing the color a bit more and you'll discover it on your own if that's something that you're interested in and if it's something that you're not interested in that's totally okay because there's the whole point of um, adult coloring is for the joy of being creative and the many benefits and the blessings that it is to us so um, it's not about being like somebody else it's about expressing yourself um, so although I will in always encourage people to you know not be shy when it comes to laying down the pigment I'm also wanting to encourage you that if that's where you're at and you that's where you want to be that that's okay um, because it's your hobby and it's your expression and the way you express yourself is important and none of us should try and be you know something that we're not we should all try and be ourselves right so i want to just add a bit more pale vermilion i'm sorry pumpkin orange so pc1032 And then PC one oh three four golden rod. And then I've got my cloud blue. So where the beige and the cloud blue meet, I'm going to alternate. Okay, so now I'm coming into my blues and what I've got is a turquoise, muted turquoise and a Copenhagen blue. And what I'm doing is I'm putting down the muted turquoise. And I'm using that to blend into the cloud blue, but I'm also going to use it as my main color for my 
deepest blue and when I'm ready then I I will add in the Copenhagen blue to deepen the muted blue without going too bright and I'll layer the Copenhagen blue and the muted turquoise to create a deeper blue And because I'm wanting to create my own shade of blue, I will go more into the layered approach than um, creating a gradient with just the colors next to each other. Um, Prismacolor does allow you to put the colors next to each other and sort of push them together. But when you're changing um, the color, it will work better with um, layers. So that's the muted turquoise. Now if I put the Copenhagen blue, which is PC906, and I'm kind of trying to see, there's my band. So it's not a very deep band but I need to know more or less where it is So I don't need to be too heavy on the Copenhagen blue because I'm just wanting it to be um, kind of more like an undertone than the main color. It's not my main color. So I have it coming here. All right, now I go over it with the muted turquoise. And I find the muted turquoise um, just knocks the brightness of this blue down while still giving me a nice rich color. And where I haven't put enough of the Copenhagen blue, um, I can just go back in and layer it up until I've got the blue that I'm looking for. Now, when it came to choosing these sort of colors, I hopped onto Pinterest. I found a couple of photographs for sunsets and sunrises, and I just noticed the main colors I was looking for and built up an idea in my head um, of how I wanted to vary the gradient. So here 
it's not as rich as this side so I'm going to bring in some more blue and this is PC906 And then again, I just go over it with a bit of the muted blue. And I don't really need a terribly hard pressure because I'm not trying to dominate the Copenhagen blue. And then I can take the cloud blue PC1023 and soften up the muted blue as well. And you just play with it until you have the color that you are looking for. So if we work on this side, we'll work to blend these blues into that beautiful yellow we've got going on. And we come in with the cloud blue. And blend that in. You might want a bit more cloud blue down here. Cloud blue. Um, muted turquoise <laughs> now because I've covered up a bit here with Posca um, it isn't taking the pencil very well so I'll just possibly just work around it where I can and blend it out okay so that's how I do the gradient from oranges into blues and blues out so now I'm using my um, 
clouded blue because I've done my dark blue in here and now I want to show you how I do the pinks. So again I'm using my cloud blue and I'm medium pressure and then I'm going out light and I'm going into my pink. Now my pinks I'm using, I've got three. I'm using for my lightest pink, Deca Pink, PC1014. My mid-tone is PC928 Blush Pink. And for my darker pink, I'm using Process Red, PC994. So I come in with my uh, Cloud Blue and then I go over it with my Deco Pink PC1014 and I blend into it using a medium to light pressure. As I come away from the blue, I will increase my pressure to more of a medium. And I'm doing this because it's a background and Whilst important, I don't want to be spending hours on each color, so I'm just going as far in as I can and, and trying to do my colors well but speedily. Next, I've got PC928 Blush Pink, and I'm going to go from dark to light and back out. So I'm going in and out. All right, here I can do a bit of a medium pressure and I'm going to go into that process red because I want to Blend it out. Okay, now I need a bit more of the Deco Pink, PC1014. So I'm just going to go over this section here. Now the key to these transitions, um, you want to pick a light tone, a mid tone and a shadow within the same color but close enough that they blend well into each other and that's going to help you to um, keep that blend quite smooth and effortless whereas if you use like a like the blue and the the yellow it's a little bit more tricky because blue and yellow don't blend into each other seamlessly there is a bit of a contrast and that's where you want to use a bit more of your lighter layers i'm coming in with pc928 and followed by the deco pink because i'm just going in and out of my blush pink and i want a bit more blush pink here So I'm just alternating between the blush pink and the deco pink. So I'm just smoothing these out but adding a bit more of a bit more color. Right, and there you have it. A quick little tutorial or how to um, showing you how to transition from a blue sky into a sunset or a blue sky into a sunrise or both. Uh, um, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that it has been helpful and informative. I will see you in the next video. Until next time, take care.